In this presentation, we're going to look at statistical modeling with R for actuarial students. This particular presentation features survival analysis. The curriculum we are following for this playlist follow, it follows the CS2B curriculum, which is risk modeling and survival analysis, and essentially comprises time series analysis, probability distributions, and survival analysis, as well as a couple of other things. So uh, we could disregard the top part there, but just we're given this instruction for the graphs, the values of X should vary between zero and 10. Okay, so the first question, draw the graph of the hazard function for the gamma distribution with parameters alpha equals 0 0.75 and alpha lambda equals 0 0.5. So what is a hazard function? It is defined as the ratio between the probability density function and its survival function. Survival functions, in case you're not aware, are commonly used in reliability and survival analysis and related fields. The survival function is a probability that the variate takes a value greater than x. So essentially, it is the complement of the cumulative distribution of x, the cumulative distribution function, 1 minus f of x, capital F. So, exercise 1. So we'll just build this up by, in parts. So we'll start off with the probability density function and just sort of work our way up. So we'll just look at this first. So we'll use this approach the whole way through. d gamma is the density function of the gamma distribution. X is just in the name of the, the function argument, 0 0.75 and 0 0.5, alpha and lambda, the shape and scale parameter, if I remember correctly. Alpha and lambda, anyway. Okay, it's what we're told. So we're going to set that up as a function called PDF, and we are going to plot that function from 0 to 10. So nothing really complicated there. That's the probability density function of the gamma distribution. Very simple plot there. Nothing fancy, just the very basics with R, but you could get a sense of what's going on there. So let's uh, go a little bit uh, more complicated, the cumulative distribution function, CDF. In this case, I'm using P gamma instead of D gamma. So I'm going to create that as a function, okay, CDF, and I'm going to plot that from 0 to 10. So there we have that curve there. And that's it. So that's all we have to do, essentially. Now, let's sort of up the ante a bit. The survival function, SF. So it's 1 minus the uh, P gamma, okay? Uh, just as we've done before. So this is just SF, and we're going to give it a title there, survival function. So this is the complement of that. So just almost like the dovetail of it. Okay. So that's our survival function. We can also use P gamma, but just state lower tail equals false. This is an alternative approach. Lower tail equals false rather than one minus P gamma. Okay, so I'll just go back and forth there a little bit, just so you can see the difference. They actually give you the same result. Okay, the plots don't change at all. Great, so that's just a different way of doing it. So. Now, what we're going to do is set up a hazard function. Now, I'm going to give this multiple names because uh, we're going to have to plot some more hazard functions. So in this first case, I'm going to call it H1, hazard function 1, because we have to do some more later on. Okay. So D gamma with our arguments divided by P gamma with our arguments lower tail equals false. Okay. So that is the survival function. And that is the density function. And the ratio is our hazard function. Okay, H1. So plot that function and we'll give it a title. So it's on the next slide here. Hazard function 1. That is our first of our three hazard functions. So let's move on. What we're going to do is something very similar. This time we're letting alpha equal to 1. Previously it was 0 0.75. Now alpha is equal to 1. So apart from that, we're doing something almost identical to what we've just done previously. Here, alpha is equal to 1. But apart from that, we have the density function as before and the survival function as before, just setting alpha equal to 1 as opposed to alpha equal to 0 0.75. We set that up as a function using this command here. We're going to call it h2, and then we're going to plot it plot dot function h2 again from 0 to 10. Now, it's a little bit unusual looking, a bit, uh, bit random, uh, but that's what it's supposed to look like. We've done nothing wrong. 
and I've checked the solutions and that's what it should look like. It's a bit of a strange one, but we'll just go with it. So, draw the graph of the hazard function for the gamma distribution with parameters alpha equals 1.5 and lambda equals 0 0.5. So, almost identical to what we've just done previously, just now we are setting alpha to 1.5, but other than that, we are very similar to what we've done before. Just in this particular instance, I went for 1 minus P gamma instead. No particular reason, just to vary things around a bit, just to so, show I can do things multiple ways. So we'll save that as a function called H3, and we'll plot that function of H3 from x equals 0 to x equals 10. And there we go. Now, just actually look at the shape of that. And I'll just sort of compare that to this one here. So this is H1, and it's essentially downward. And H3 is essentially upward. They're almost like the complements of each other. Sort of like the PDF and the cumulative distribution functions earlier on. So that's a, fun, a consequence of comment on the thickness of the tails of the distributions of part B with the tails of part A and part C. So essentially, this is the relevance of the alpha parameter here. So if alpha is less than or equal to 1, or less than 1 actually, it is a decreasing function of x and therefore indicating a heavier tail than with compared to the exponential distribution. If alpha is greater than 1, that should be greater than 1 as it matter as it happens, is an increasing function of x and indicating a lighter tail than the exponential distribution. And if alpha is equal to 1, then the function is relatively constant for most of the projection. All right, that's the a bit of theory there. Essentially, what is the role of the alpha parameter in the gamma distribution, which is fairly important. All right, we'll leave it there.